There's an app in California that tells you if Republicans live in your neighborhood. <laughs> I'm not a political guy. I don't, I can't get in. It's just exhausting to me. It seems like just ugh. But I have picked up on this. I live in California. If you're a Republican in California, you better keep that to yourself. <laughs> Ooh wee. They hate Republicans. They don't hate anything more than Republicans in Cal. Republicans, they're not even real people. They're like these mythical creatures that hide in the bushes. Now snatch up your kids and force them to get a job. There's an app in California that tells you if Republicans live in your neighborhood. I've seen it. There's little elephant heads on the houses. I feel sorry for Republicans. It's rough for them out there. They can't slip up. They gotta hide all the time. They can't say what they mean. They can't one day be with their California friends and be like, you know what? I think life begins at conception. I'm like, what? What'd you just say? I said, I love paying for other people's contraceptives. <laughs> if you know your history of the Republicans in California, they used to have a big, it was a proud party, and it was a big, major party in California. And I know for a fact what's left of the Republican Party in California meets in secret in the San Fernando Valley in old attics that are too small to stand up straight in. <laughs> and they just rant to each other because that's all they have left. They're like, you know what? I think we just lower that corporate tax rate a little bit more to get more businesses coming back to America, get more business started, therefore more people will be working, and then more people will be paying in to the taxes, and then we'll be able to sustain the entitlements for the people who really need them. And you know what else, guys? I like black people. Well, yeah, I like black people too. Why do they keep saying that about us? I like black people. Like, you know any black people? No. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Thanks for having me in your town. This is a beautiful town, beautiful scenery around here, and it's good because your red lights are like 40 minutes long. <laughs> good that there's something to look at. Why are they so long? <laughs> I got here yesterday and I was at a light and I was like, oh, this is beautiful. This is crazy. This is good. <laughs> okay, I'm good. But it just kept, it just stayed red. It's like the city was like, no, look longer. Good to be here to see you guys. I, was, I had a flight from Tampa to Los Angeles where I live a couple of days ago and I was checking into that flight. You know, they make you put your bag on there and you weigh it. And that lady from the airline looked at me and she goes, sir, your bag is over 50 pounds. And for safety reasons, we can't put bags in excess of 50 pounds onto the flight. So I start to grab the bag, she goes, but <laughs> if you give us a hundred more dollars, We'll go ahead and throw it on the plane for you. I was like, well, that's great, but how does that fix the safety issue that you were just so concerned about? Let me get this straight. If I give you a hundred more dollars, you're going to turn on the extra safety features of this aeroplane. Like, I didn't know that's how it worked. They shouldn't have gave me that kind of information. We were about to take off. Like, certain pictures see that we're about to take off. I just threw 100 at her. I was like, nope. <laughs> and here's five more. Trey stays down <laughs> the whole time. I'm a Trey down kind of guy. <laughs> 
plane started taxiing out. I still had my phone out. She got so mad. She come running down the aisle. I said, sir, you need to put your phone away. The signal from your phone can interfere with the plane signal. That could be very, I just threw my credit cards. Don't you talk to me anymore. <laughs> Everybody gets Wi-Fi. <laughs> Don't worry about the signals, everyone. I've paid extra for the safety package. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. I recently got the TSA pre-check. <laughs> yeah. It went straight to my head. <laughs> now I go to the airport and I just pace in front of the unchecked. <laughs> Look at you winding around all unchecked. You guys need to check yourself. <laughs> One guy got really mad at me and later, Turns out we were on the same flight and we were boarding. And he got to board in front of me. He walked by and right in my face, he said, group one. <laughs> like, act like you've been there before, buddy. <laughs> the flight from Tampa to LA was called Flight 10. That was the name of it, Flight 10. I didn't feel very comfortable flying across the country on Flight 10. Every flight I've ever been on has been a strong four-digit number. <laughs> flight 1455, they check both engines before that flight takes off. <laughs> flight 10, that sounds like a test. <laughs> that sounds like there's just some guys in the room trying some stuff, you know, and it's not been going well. It's like they're in a room like, oh, guys, flight nine, that was a disaster. <laughs> you really need the wheels. You need the wheels, you do, you do. You don't need them for the flying part, but you definitely need them for the landing part. So I was kind of right. <laughs> Anyone got any ideas for flight 10? Who's turning it? Who's got an idea for flight 10? I got one. What's a six hour nonstop flight? Okay, how about we put a quarter of a tank of ethanol fuel in it? Play nothing on the speakers but Barack Obama speeches, and let's see how far Flight 10 can go on corn juice and hope. It's Flight 10! It's Flight 10! Who cares? This is Spirit Airline Flight 10. What are we gonna lose, like two taxpayers? Let's try some stuff. Let's figure it out. I had something happen to me that's never happened before. I had a flight from LA to Charlotte and had a layover in Baltimore. And the plane landed, it got 20 yards from the gate and the plane stopped. And the pilot came on, he's like, sorry ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna be here a while. We can't just pull this plane up to the gate, we gotta get a tow. <laughs> this model plane has to be towed in. Have you ever heard of that? That was driving me. I was like, what do you mean? He had to fly. And he kept coming. We waited like 40 minutes for this tow to show. And he kept talking like that was no... He's like, sorry, this model plane. This model plane needs a tow. I was like, you mean the model plane that just took off from Los Angeles, California? <laughs> Used two massive engines to get up to 30,000 feet? And then soared from sea to shining sea like a proud, bald American eagle? Used its fancy gizmos and gadgets on board to locate one strip of concrete in Baltimore, Maryland. Landed safely on that concrete, got 20 yards from the gate, and all of a sudden that same plane is like, no. Nah. Mm -mm. Yep. Mm -mm. I am exhausted right now. America is big, man. And then the tow showed up, it was the size of a golf cart. <laughs> it wasn't a small, it was a big plane, towed it like 20 feet, and then it had golf clubs on the back of it. <laughs> I don't like turbulence, that scares me. I don't understand how the plane doesn't crash. Getting knocked around like that, you'd think I'd be used to it, but I'm not. Which, like, the worst flight I was ever on was like almost two and a half years ago, I think, and I thought that thing was going down for sure. I was like, I gotta do something to distract myself or 
or I'm gonna cause an incident on this flight. <laughs> so I was like, I'll just put my headphones in and I'll watch whatever they have on TV to distract myself. That'll make me feel better. What they had on the TV that night was the first presidential debate of the 2016 election. <laughs> That's what it was. And I watched the whole thing. And after that, I gotta tell you, I was totally cool with that plane crashing. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I was so cool with it. I was like, hey, I tried to make it happen. I was like, hey, one of them's gonna win. Let's just take it down now. I don't wanna go back down. How fast can it go straight down? Cause that's how fast we should do it. Such a divided nation right there. No, I don't know how you fix it. It's scary, you know. And I, you know, the 2020 election's starting, so that'll probably that'll bring us back together. <laughs> oh, <fuck. laughs> you hear growing up. I'm sure you heard it. Everyone hears, it, especially lately. You hear. You gotta express yourself. Gotta express yourself. Always. Be confident enough to express yourself. The world would be a much better place if everyone could just express themselves. Well, we're about 10 years into social media now and everyone can express themselves. What do you think? <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> well, Stott, how interesting would it be if you could tell our founding fathers about Twitter? If you could break that to them, that'd blow their mind. <laughs> Everyone can say anything they want, anytime? Yeah, yeah. Well, we're taking away that First Amendment. We're not gonna have that. <laughs> Bring it back in, don't print anything. <laughs> Get everyone back, we gotta have another meeting. Because <laughs> when they gave us the freedom of speech, that's back when everyone lived in farms. And he's like, yeah, say whatever you want. No one's gonna hear you. Who cares? <laughs> like, if you want to talk some smack to George Washington, you had to get in a buggy. <laughs> and it took like three months to go 20 miles. Half your family was gonna die of smallpox <laughs> on the way. Man, it'd blow their mind. They'd probably be like, well, the people talking are the educated people, right? It's obviously people that know what they're talking about. <laughs> no, not at all. No. <sighs> what, well, does the president take part in these things? Yeah. I saw this commercial day for these chips. You know where in the commercial they tell you how good the chips taste? The whole commercial was to tell you that the bag is now easier to open. <laughs> That's all they talked about. In the whole commercial, that the bag is easier to open than it used to be. <laughs> I, I didn't, I, have I just been super strong? This whole time, I'm just finding out about it, because I tell you right now, open a bag of chips, that's nothing to me. <laughs> Anytime I want chips, I'm like, poof, chips. <laughs> What's next, life? I've probably been blowing people's minds <laughs> my whole life, and I'm not even realizing. Every time I've been at a picnic and opened my bag of chips, people at other picnics are probably like. <laughs> I was a scrawny kid, I never got picked on, always wondered why.
They probably saw me open a bag of chips in like the first grade, first day of school. I'm like, don't mess with that kid. Did you see what he did to those chips? <laughs> that kid keeps his Air Jordans. Commercials are ridiculous. They make stuff way more glamorous, and they sh it shouldn't be li like. I don't know if you know this, but tequila is trying to convince everybody that tequila is smooth now. <laughs> Every commercial I see for tequila, it goes down smooth. It's so smooth. I heard that enough. I was like, wow, they must have fixed it. I tried some. They haven't done anything to it, you guys. It's the same horrible drink it's always been. You shouldn't be able to tell people that tequila is it's the least smooth drink that you can drink. That's why there's so many distractions. People don't just take a drink of tequila like they're doing anything else. No, you gotta do all this other stuff. You gotta lick this and suck on that. Hmm. What are you trying to hide, tequila? What are you up to? Every commercial for tequila starts the exact same. They got a cool actor, drink some tequila at the beginning of the commercial, and then smooth things happen to him throughout the rest of the commercial. What they're implying there is that smooth things happen after you drink tequila. Nothing smooth has ever happened to anybody after they've been out drinking. There's never been one person that was out drinking tequila one night and they woke up the next morning and they couldn't remember anything. So they call their friends up and ask them what happened and have their friends describe their behavior from the night before as smooth. <laughs> That's never had, no one's ever been like, what happened, man? I don't remember anything last night. What happened? I'm like, oh my God. Never seen you like that before. <laughs> oh, you were just so. Smooth. <laughs> you were so articulate. <laughs> you were very respectful to all the young ladies. <laughs> Dude, you peed in all the legal places to pee. <laughs> I've never seen you do that sober. That was an impressive evening, my friend. Wearing $3,000 suits to drink tequila in those commercials. You don't wear a $3,000 suit if you know you're gonna be drinking tequila. <laughs> you should wear something a little more practical <laughs> for that occasion. I don't know what that, a plastic would probably be the best thing. <laughs> I think all tequila should come with a 99 cent gas station poncho. I think that's just a good idea. I think that's a good business idea. There's actually a business I've tried to start in California, but I can't find any Republicans to help me get my business started. Uh, yeah. It's rough. It's rough out there. It's rough in these streets. Mm. I was watching this young lady be interviewed on TV the other day on some show, and they were interviewing her because she came up with this machine. Young lady, 24 years old, and she came up with this machine, and what it did is it filtered dirty water into clean drinking water quickly and cheaply. It looked like a little plastic box, and they've sent these things all over the world to these poor countries, and they said because of her invention, they saved thousands of lives. And they said, how'd you come up with this idea? And she's like, oh, I was just on my couch daydreaming, and it came to me. What? That is incredible that she could come up with something like that just on her couch because that it, it made me feel terrible because <laughs> the other day I was on my couch and for two hours I thought to myself how many people would have to die before I was the greatest basketball player on earth <laughs> I gave that serious thought for two hours. <laughs> and at the end of the two hours, I concluded that, uh, you know, it'd be a lot. 
Like there'd be so many dead people at that point that, you know, it wouldn't even be fun to be the best basketball player on earth. Because no one would care, you know, because of the tragedy. I mean, no one would care about it. I'd be like, hey, you guys want to get a game? They're like, no, Brenda, we're trying to rebuild. Maybe she pick up a shovel and help us with this rebuild. I'm sorry, I don't know anything about shovels or building, but you just let me know if you need any help getting buckets. Because I'm the best. I'm the best that's left. I know I'm not supposed to hate large groups of people at one time. I know we're really frowning upon that, but I do. They're here in your town, I saw them, they're everywhere. They're called pedestrians. I hate them. Why is it, no matter where you're at, you're trying to get to an intersection and you gotta post some guy crossing the street in front of your car that looks like he just got to earth. I think you should be able to hit three pedestrians a year. No questions asked. You just get to do that with your citizenship. It's a perk. Maybe that's a little harsh. That's harsh. Maybe you could just nudge through here with your car, or you can trade in your three nudges for one full speed hit. That's what I would do. I'd save up for the full speed hit, and I'll tell you exactly who I'd hit. I saw this guy today. You ever see this guy? I want to hit that guy so bad. <laughs> and for no other reason than to prove to him that he is not a Jedi. <laughs> there was a movie nerd, now get across the street. <laughs> sure how much force my car has, you little prick. <laughs> I hate you. Got a text from my best friend back in LA today, and he's gonna propose to his girlfriend next weekend. So I got about five days to stop that from happening. <laughs> <sighs> she sucks. <laughs> I can't stand this woman. She's ugh. Ugh. If only we've been together a year, and he's gonna propose. This ugh. She's so annoying. This is how she, what she's like. I met her a year ago, he brought her around to this place we were hanging out at. And it's my friend's new girlfriend. I'm trying to make her feel welcome, you know? So we're talking. And somehow we start talking about Europe. And I told her I'd never been to Europe. And you thought I just slapped her in the face and ran out of the bar or something. She was so upset that I'd never been to Europe. She's like, you've never been to Europe? What do you mean you've never been to Europe? How have you never been to Europe? You've never been, are you serious right now? You've never been to Europe? Luke, did you know that Brandon has never been to Europe? How have you never made it to Europe? How old are you? How have you made it this far in your life? I was like, look lady, it was easy. I just didn't go to Europe. It's the easiest thing I've ever done. In my whole life, I didn't know I was doing it until we had this conversation. That's how good I am at it. Watch this. Not going, you see that? You see what I just did? Last basketball season, we were watching the first weekend of the playoffs at his house, right? And she walked in, she's like, oh, are you guys just gonna watch basketball all day? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this is what she did, she put her hand on her stomach like this, she goes, guys, that's disgusting. That's disgusting. That's the word she used to describe us watching basketball. She doesn't know what words mean. There was nothing disgusting about us watching basketball. We weren't rubbing mayonnaise all over each other <laughs> as we watched basketball. We were like, ooh, get it, LeBron, get it. Oh, yeah, this is great. I love basketball. This is fantastic. <laughs> if that's what we were doing, I'd be like, you're right. I'm glad you showed up. There's got to be a better way. <laughs> you're right. You saved me a lot of money on mayonnaise. 
a lot of games. I live in California. I like living in California. It's fine. It's a ripoff, though. I mean, it's falling apart. If it rains for more than 10 minutes, half the road dissolves. They're probably some sort of California road. It's not real concrete. It's like avocados and almonds. <laughs> like it's good for the planet. No, we don't. Not for roads. <laughs> so many taxes. Just tax, tax, tax. They want to tax us for how many, how many miles we drive in our own cars. That's, that might happen. My environment friends are like, that's great. It's gonna save the environment. They can tax me, it's gonna save the environment. Like, you won't be talking when you can't have plants or a yard because of photosynthesis taxes. <laughs> and they're not gonna do one plant tax, they're gonna tax you on every synthesis. We have uh, the legal marijuana in California. That's a big deal. Whoa, didn't expect that. Okay. Didn't expect that at all here, but that's cool. <laughs> it's your last day living here. But it passed. You know, the night it passed, I was with a friend of mine at dinner. We're at this restaurant. I came across the TV that they had that it passed. He stood up in the restaurant. He's like, this is it. Finally, man, I'm going to smoke my marijuana wherever and whenever I want. And I was like, marijuana was illegal? <laughs> well, they should have made TV commercial got the word out because I don't think anybody knew that. Everybody's high in California. You can think what I'm about to tell you is an exaggeration or a flat out lie, but it's true. About four years ago, I got pulled over by a high cop. <laughs> he was high. He came to my door. He's like, excuse me, sir. <laughs> huh. <laughs> Do you know why I pulled you over? I'm like, no, officer. I don't. I was kind of worried about myself. He's like, ah. Well, now to have you stop till you do look kind of suspicious. So I think I'm gonna need to check your car for snacks. <laughs> it's like, I don't have any snacks in my car, sir. He's like, about the power invest in me by the state of California, I demand you to take me to get some snacks. <laughs> I was like, well, can we take your car? He's like, yeah. I was like, can I drive real fast? I'm on the highway with the siren on. He's like, absolutely. Why wouldn't we do that? <laughs> and that's what we did. <laughs> it's my favorite LA day. I'll never forget it. <laughs> it's the day I got my gun. <laughs> Big day. Big day. My lady friend was just moving to a new condo there in Los Angeles. We lived there for about four hours. <laughs> we lived about four hours and this lady came up and banged on the door and as soon as I opened the door, she started yelling at me. No hello, no introduction, nothing. As soon as I opened the door, she's like, I live right below you and I can hear you guys walking around and I'm about to lose my mind. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry, but unfortunately, that's the only way I know how to get. <laughs> From one room, to literally anywhere else I'm gonna go <laughs> in my life. I mean, that's how I was taught. I'm from a small town in Oklahoma, and Oklahoma, like, hey, I'm gonna go kitchen, get a snack. I'll just use my legs again. And then we get up and we walk over there. It's the most efficient way. She came up a couple days later, banging on the door, same thing. She says, it's me from downstairs again, and I can hear your dog running around, and I'm about to live. I was like, look, lady, I got bad news for you. You are gonna hate living here. You're gonna hate it here because no one in this apartment knows how to hover. None of us know how to do that. 
And if we did know how to hover, we wouldn't live in this terrible condo because me and my amazing floating family would be touring the country making millions of dollars right now. <laughs> You'd have known who I was before I moved in because I'd be on the TV every time I was in your city. Come see Brandon Vestal and his amazing floating miniature pincher and lady friend. But you didn't because that's not real. So won't you go back downstairs before I end up on the news again? <laughs> And it won't be for opening chips. <laughs> we have a big, beautiful pool at the complex, right? Beautiful, got waterfalls, Olympics, it's beautiful. But what we don't have is a lifeguard or someone who's been through some sort of class in case something goes down. No, what we have on the wall, life-saving sentences. Because everyone knows there's an emergency, you got time to read and learn. <laughs> and apply what you just read and learned to an emergency situation. I don't know how they expect that to go down. Like, Brandon, Steve's down, he's not breathing, what are we gonna do? Read the wall. <laughs> oh, look at number one. It says he shouldn't have been running in the first place. <laughs> Steve, always in a hurry. Oh, look at four, it says we're gonna put our mouth on his mouth and blow. Looks like Steve is gonna die today. <laughs> I know too much about Steve. Rest in peace. <laughs> I try to fix things around the new place. I don't know how to. <sighs> I try. I really try. You know how I fix things? I blow on them. <laughs> That's right. I blow on it twice. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and if that doesn't work, I smack it. <laughs> and if that doesn't work, this is broke. We got a new one of these. That's what I do. Worked on video games when I was a kid. Yeah. Does it work in real life? Makes me look like an idiot. I was in a car in the 405 that broke down, and I don't know what I was thinking. I just started hanging out with this guy. I was trying to show off. I don't know what I was thinking. I had him pull over and pop the hood. I look like such an idiot. There's cars zipping by me at like 90. There's smoke from the engine hitting me in the face. I'm on the side of the road like... Try it now. <laughs> no? <laughs> no? Well, I don't know, officer. We're gonna have to get the snacks another way. I don't know how we're gonna get them. I don't know. I tell you what, you stay here with the car and give me your gun. I shall return. ripped off all the time. Always get ripped off. I belong to a gym called 24 Hour Fitness. It closed at 11. <laughs> I don't like to go to restaurants that I think are ripping us off because they try to get out of stuff, like sushi places. Cook the food, there's loss. <laughs> don't trust you. My friends know this about me. They call me up and they call me up the other day and they're like, Brandon, you gotta go with us tonight. We're going to this cool place. The theme is Japanese barbecue. Everything's cooked. Everything's cooked. We know how you feel about that. So, but it's cool. You gotta come. I was like, all right, if everything's cooked, I'll go. Here's the theme of the Japanese barbecue place. You sit down at a table. There's a grill in the middle of the table. You order what you want. They bring it out raw and you cook it yourself. They got us again. <laughs> what really upset me was how into it my friends were. Like, they'd never seen a grill before. Like, look, Brandon, I put that chicken on, it starts to sizzle. I'm a Japanese barbecuer. Ha! <laughs> I was like, yeah, guys, this is probably the greatest night of my life. Maybe if we give them more money, then let's do the dishes and take out the trash. <laughs> let's do this thing. And my wife had a kid. Uh, we still have it. <laughs> we have the kid. And I'm supposed to be a dad now. Uh, I'm not, I don't know how good I'm going to be. Cause like, I'm addicted to sugar. <laughs> That's my thing. No drugs, no alcohol, just sugar. I love sugar. And I'm trying to stop because I'm trying to be a good example, but it ain't going to happen. 
Like two years ago, I was in the grocery store in the cereal aisle, and they had Frosted Flakes with Lucky Charm marshmallows in it. Yeah. I just started shaking. I'm just now getting my life back together. Blew my mind. This is my first kid, only kid. I've never been around kids. I was the only child, not a big family. So it's been a lot of learning going on. I get yelled at for stuff all the time. Like stuff I don't think I should be getting yelled at for. I don't think it makes sense. When he was seven months old, I was on the couch feeding him a bottle and my wife came in. She's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Keeping it alive? And this is what she was mad about. This blew my mind. She says, I don't want him to have too many baby bottles because he has too many baby bottles. He's going to like the baby bottle more than he likes the real thing. And then I'm not going to be able to latch on to the real thing because he's going to want the plastic baby bottle. <laughs> I was like, well, we don't have anything to worry about because no son of mine. <laughs> No son of anybody. It's not, that's, <laughs> new moms, don't worry about that. It's not even close, and if it was, you wouldn't be able to keep baby bottles on the shelves. <laughs> Every lonely guy in America would be swiping up all the baby bottles. <laughs> be terrible. Bunch of hungry kids running around. He's uh, three and a half now, and he's just, uh, I, I don't like him. <laughs> I mean, I love him to death, but I don't like him right now. <laughs> we're doing the terrible twos and threes. That's a real thing. He's a, ugh. <laughs> and we're trying to potty train him, and it's not going well, because when he poops, he poops like this. And he's been such a little prick lately that I don't think we're going to teach him the right way to do it. It's like, good luck making friends and getting a girlfriend when you poop like a fountain. Good luck. Teach you to embarrass me, my favorite target. I never forget. Wife, I like her. She's all right. <laughs> I like her. I don't like everything about her. She's got short little legs. <laughs> I have long legs. I haven't been able to walk at a normal rate of speed <laughs> for like a decade now. <laughs> and if I do walk at a, even half normal speed, I just leave her. <laughs> She's actually supposed to be here tonight, but I had to get on the plane. I don't know where she was. <laughs> She's fine. She's a big girl. You see, you ever see me walking with my wife? It looks like one of those Sasquatch videos, you know? Just... <laughs> it's a good thing about my wife is we don't fight that much. A lot of couples fight a lot. That's not, we're not like that. But when we do, <sighs> it can get scary. Like, she. <laughs> She does this thing, I think she f starts fighting with me about 10 minutes before I get in the room. <laughs> because I seem to always miss the logical points of these arguments. I don't think I'm showing up for the beginning of the show. I think I'm coming in late. The other day I walk in the front door and I can hear her yelling in the back. I'm like, oh my God, what's going on? I run back there, she's yelling at me. <laughs> I haven't been home all day. Then she sees me and she's like, blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh my God. I, don't, I was like, I don't even know what you're mad about. I don't want to put up with this right now. I'm just going to leave. I don't want to put up with this. And when I said I was going to leave, demon level number two came out. <laughs> she was so, she like started pacing back and forth. She's like, oh, you're just going to leave? You think you're just going to leave? But that's not working for me, Brandon. So that's not working for you. So that's not working for us. You're the one that messed this up. So you need to fix it right now. You're not going anywhere until you fix this. Because you mess it up, fix it. 
I was like, I don't even know what you're mad about. So I just walked up to her and I was like, <laughs> That's my time, you guys. You guys have been fantastic. I had a lot of fun. Thanks for coming out. Thank you very much. Thank you.